Chrome is like that friend who shows up to your house, promises to just chill, and then quietly raids your fridge, eats all your snacks, and falls asleep on your couch. Except instead of snacks, it's your RAM. All of it. Every megabyte. Open 10 tabs. Chrome starts breathing heavily like it's climbing Mount Everest. Open 20. Your laptop fans spin up like you're preparing for lunar takeoff. And it's not because your PC is weak. Chrome just likes to live large. It wants more resources than a AAA game from 2028. But here's the fun part. You don't actually have to live like this. Chrome isn't the only browser on Earth, even though Google acts like it is. There are browsers that genuinely run lighter, stay calmer, and don't treat your RAM like an all-you-can-eat buffet. I've spent weeks swapping between different browsers, on a desktop, a cheap laptop, and even a dusty old machine I found in storage, just to see which ones actually behave. And after enough testing to make me question my life choices, I've narrowed it down to seven Chrome alternatives that really do use less RAM, while still giving you a modern, smooth browsing experience. Some of these you've heard of, some of these you've never touched, and one of them surprised me so much I had to recheck Task Manager twice to make sure it wasn't lying. All right, deep breath. Let's start with number seven. Ungoogled Chromium is basically Chrome after a long, embarrassing intervention. Same bones, same rendering engine, same speed, but all the Google bits, the tracking, the background processes, the mystery modules that sit there quietly phoning home are gone. Think of it as Chrome on a diet, but not the kind where someone pretends to eat clean while secretly ordering midnight Uber Eats. This one actually trims everything. The magic is simple. Once all the Google services are stripped out, the browser stops running dozens of background threads that normal users never see, but definitely feel. That's where the RAM savings come from. Fewer invisible processes, fewer system calls, and no sneaky sync services trying to do side quests while you're just trying to check your email. Now, I'll be honest, this one isn't meant for everyone. It feels a little bare bones at first, mostly because it is. Syncing bookmarks is a DIY project. Updates aren't pushed automatically. You need to download builds from the community. But if you're the kind of person who likes your software clean, fast, and not whispering your secrets to a data center, Ungoogled Chromium is weirdly satisfying. It's familiar without being bloated, fast without being flashy, and on older machines, it behaves better than Chrome ever will. If you want something a little more polished straight out of the box though, number six feels like its cooler, more athletic cousin. Opera has existed longer than some of you watching this video, and somehow, it still feels fresher than half the browsers that launched last year. It's the quiet overachiever of the browser world. The one nobody talks about until they try it and go, wait, why is this thing actually good? Opera's RAM usage is consistently lower than Chrome, mostly thanks to two things. First, its built-in ad blocker, which works better than half the extensions out there. Cutting ads and trackers before they load saves more RAM than people realize. Pages feel lighter, cleaner, and faster. Second, Opera manages memory aggressively behind the scenes. It doesn't open a new process for every tiny browser feature like Chrome does. The result? Opening 20 tabs doesn't turn your laptop into a space heater. And then there's Opera GX, the gaming browser, which sounds ridiculous until you realize they added a real RAM limiter. You literally tell the browser how much memory it's allowed to eat, and it listens. Imagine Chrome trying that. Chrome would laugh in your face and then spawn 30 new processes out of spite. Opera feels modern without feeling heavy. Sidebars, built-in social apps, battery saver mode, it packs in features without turning into a circus. If you need something functional but also fun, this one hits a nice balance. But if you want something laser-focused on privacy and speed, and number five has that energy. Brave feels like that friend who removes all the junk food from your pantry because they care about your health. Except in this case, it's removing ads, trackers, third-party scripts, and every other piece of digital cholesterol clogging up websites. Brave blocks everything by default. And I mean everything. That's why it uses less RAM than Chrome, even though they're built on the same engine. When a site tries to load 40 scripts and 20 tracking pixels, Brave just says, nope, and loads the page without the nonsense. Fewer scripts means fewer processes. Fewer processes means less RAM. And the funny part? 
Pages load so much faster that going back to Chrome feels like switching from fiber internet to dial-up. Now, Brave does have personality. Sometimes a little too much personality. The crypto stuff is... there. If you don't care about tokens or rewards or blockchain anything, you can ignore it. The browser won't bother you unless you dig into the menus. But the core experience? Fast. Minimal. Easy on your memory. For students and anyone working on cheap hardware, Brave feels like someone swapped out your laptop's CPU when you weren't looking. Smooth scrolling. Tabs that don't freeze. Video playback without stuttering. But maybe you're the type who likes customization. You want your browser to feel like your browser. You want buttons, shortcuts, rearranged toolbars, and tab stacks that don't turn your screen into clutter. Well, number four was basically invented for you. Vivaldi is what happens when a team of former Opera developers decide to build a browser specifically for people who open 47 tabs just to check something real quick. It's ridiculously customizable. And I mean everything. The UI, the colors, the layout, the keyboard shortcuts, the tab behavior, the menus, the position of buttons you didn't even know had positions. Vivaldi lets you turn your browser into a cockpit. Now, with all that customization, you'd think the RAM usage would be terrible. But it's actually one of the most stable Chromium-based browsers I've used. Why? Because Vivaldi handles tabs differently. Instead of spawning endless processes, it leans heavily on tab stacking, letting you group tabs together under a single header. It cuts down the clutter and the memory overhead. And unlike Chrome, which apparently wakes every tab up the moment you breathe in its direction, the Valdi keeps inactive tabs under control. No surprise background activity. No weird spikes. There is a sweet spot here. If you enable every feature under the sun, yes, memory usage creeps up. But used wisely, the Valdi feels smoother than Chrome with half the chaos. For researchers, writers, developers, and anyone who lives inside their browser all day, Vivaldi feels like a workstation. But if you're not into tweaking settings for an hour, number three might be exactly what your sanity needs. Let's just address the elephant in the room. Old Edge was awful. The Windows 10 version, the one nobody opened except by accident. But the new Edge, the Chromium Edge, is shockingly efficient. This browser does something Chrome refuses to. It sleeps. Not metaphorically, literally. The Sleeping Tabs feature is brilliant. You leave a tab alone for a while, Edge politely puts it to sleep, and memory usage drops instantly. No drama, no lag. When you click it again, it wakes up like nothing happened. Chrome has tried similar things, but Edge does it better. It wakes up faster, sleeps deeper, and stays out of your CPU's way. Then there's Efficiency Mode, which kicks in when your system is under load or when you're on battery. Tabs slow down, background scripts relax, and your laptop stops panicking. The funniest part? Edge and Chrome are basically the same browser underneath. Same engine, same extension support, same developer tools. But Microsoft tuned this thing like they were tired of getting bullied for a decade and finally decided to fight back. On Windows, Edge feels native. Smooth scrolling, lower RAM usage, fewer random spikes. On older laptops, the difference is noticeable within minutes. But if you avoid Microsoft products like they're haunted, number two is the browser people install when they want independence not just from Chrome, but from big tech in general. Firefox is the only major browser on Earth that isn't part of the Chromium empire. It runs on its own engine, Gecko, which is why it behaves differently from every other browser on this list. Where Chrome explodes into a hundred processes like confetti at a birthday party, Firefox keeps its system lean. It uses a limited process model by default, four core content processes, which means 20 tabs doesn't instantly mean 20 processes. It's controlled, predictable, and noticeably lighter on RAM. But here's the part that impressed me most. Firefox handles tab unloading intelligently. Leave a tab in the background long enough and Firefox steps in, frees the memory, and keeps a ghost of the tab ready for when you come back. It feels seamless and your system feels calmer. Firefox is also the browser with actual values. It's independent, open source privacy-focused without throwing crypto buzzwords everywhere. No hidden trackers. No background telemetry you need a PhD to disable. For multi-tab addicts, this is the closest you'll get to guilt-free browsing. You can open Reddit, YouTube, research papers, three documentation pages, and a few random tabs you don't remember clicking, 
and Firefox just shrugs and keeps going. Extensions feel lightweight. The interface is clean without being sterile, and they've been steadily tuning the engine over the last few years, making it faster without bulking it up. Firefox isn't perfect. Some older web apps behave better on Chromium, but as a day-to-day -day browser, it feels like a breath of fresh air. But number one, number one is the browser that shocked me. I installed it as a joke. I kept using it because my RAM usage dropped so low I thought Task Manager was broken. Thorium is one of those browsers you find in niche forums, usually mentioned by someone with a username like Kernel Wizard. I didn't take it seriously at first. It sounded like a modded Minecraft build more than an actual browser. But wow, this thing flies. Thorium is a heavily optimized fork of Chromium. Same compatibility, same layout, same extension support, but built with compiler flags and patches that make it run significantly leaner than Chrome. It reduces memory allocation, speeds up JavaScript execution, tightens thread scheduling, and trims the fat everywhere. The result? It feels like Chrome in turbo mode. When I opened 10 tabs, Thorium used noticeably less RAM. When I opened 20, Chrome started sweating while Thorium kept humming along like a bored intern. Video playback was smoother on weaker hardware. Background tabs behaved properly instead of randomly spiking, and the entire browser felt more stable under pressure. This is the kind of browser that makes old laptops feel young again. And on desktop, the difference is subtle at first, until you start multitasking with heavy sites. Now, let me be clear, this is a community project. There's no big corporate backing, no giant PR machine. Updates exist, but it's not on the same automatic schedule as Firefox or Edge. If you want something polished, this isn't it. But if you want raw performance, the leanest, fastest, most efficient version of Chromium that currently exists, Thorium takes the crown. It's the browser that made Chrome look bloated, and that's not easy to do. So there you have it. Seven Chrome alternatives that don't treat your RAM like an all-you-can-eat buffet. And the interesting part is how different they all feel. Some of them take the clean and minimal route. Some pack in features without slowing down. Some run on their own engines entirely. And a few of them are just Chrome without all the baggage Chrome insists on dragging around. I'm not saying you have to break up with Chrome permanently. It's familiar. It works. It syncs across everything like a clingy but useful partner. But if your laptop fans start screaming every time you open a YouTube playlist, it might be time to see what else is out there. Personally, I've ended up using a mix. Firefox for research, Brave for casual browsing, and Thorium when I want everything to feel snappy. There's no rule that says you need only one browser. Treat them like apps. Use the right one for the right job. If you found a new browser to try from this list, good. Your RAM will thank you. And if Chrome feels threatened, well, maybe that's healthy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.